Welcome back to class. Michael Allison, we're doing some uh, construction management online learning today. Talking the uh, basics of electricity, we do a little bit of circuit information, and uh, get into a little bit of drawings. Have some PowerPoint for you, some Wikipedia to be able to start off, and then uh, get into some drawings. So let's stay in Wikipedia here. And I want to make sure that folks are understanding that electricity is a physical phenomenon. It's dealing with an electrical charge and magnetism is all related. There's uh, all kinds of additional information to know about how electricity is generated and all that other stuff. But we're not going to do that. We're going to be dealing with AC, so alternating and direct current. So there's this same thing called alternating current. And uh, the idea, we're going to talk about that in just a second. So we're not going to do a lot of DC in this discussion. So AC, DC is not just a band. It's alternating current and direct current. Um, we'll, uh, we'll do some more in PowerPoint in a second, but I just do want to talk about alternating current. <clears throat> so alternating current. And Wikipedia calls it periodic reversal of the direction of energy. And so if we have, think of AC as um, current going one direction and then getting pulled back the other direction and then going again in another direction and then going back this direction. So the if we were talking DC or direct current, the idea is that the electron flow is always going in one direction and so I believe AC was uh, the invention of, of Tesla Nikola Tex Tesla if I call his name right anyway cool stuff look that up that's neat to look at but we're gonna be talking AC and so one of the things that <clears throat> if I'm jumping in too quick and apologize and just trying to give you some basic language here, but uh, then we're talking uh, frequency because I don't have this inform information in my uh, in my PowerPoint. If you think of the the current and AC, how fast it's uh, switching directions, that's called a hertz. So uh, in the United States, it's right around sixty hertz that uh, changes. Um, 60 times in a second, I think, is what it is what 60 means, and I don't know if it. Uh, do, 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 I don't know a lot about it other than hertz is how fast the AC is changing. Okay, good enough. I got some things that I didn't have in PowerPoint. Let's jump into PowerPoint. I have a couple PowerPoints for you before we get into the drawings. So let's continue with language here and some uh, we have voltage current and resistance and there's a relationship to them and I don't care uh, the uh, for construction I've never never been uh, I think it's fascinating but from a construction standpoint uh, one of the books I had that was teaching uh, has this whole section about understanding the relationship here and so I mean it, it's it's fine you can know it I've never once used it the but the ohms ohms law is what we're talking about and uh, the relationship between voltage current and resistance and how if you change one the other two are going to change as well so and if we want a real quick definition, Ohm's law states that if the voltage in a current remains constant, a change in the resistance produces an inversely proportional constant in current. Okay, great. So all, all I really want you to know is that you'll hear words like volts, ohms, amps, or ampers. I almost never hear the word ampers, but I don't even know if I'm saying that right here. Amps, amps, here resistance. Uh, ohms is how you measure resistance. Here are the words current. Um, 
current increases as, as resistance decreases. Now this concept is important in that not we're going to have something called a voltage drop that you're going to hear about. And so the idea that you have an electrical conductor, meaning a wire, usually copper or aluminum, and the uh, but that that conductor that's moving that's allowing electricity to travel is has resistance to it, meaning it's it's a it's like having to push against something, right? So the electricity is having something to push across. The longer the the conductor is or the smaller the size of the conductor sometimes it's going to create more resistance at certain voltages and so that's the only time I've ever really heard anything about um, volts resistance amps is dealing with voltage drop over uh, over distances okay and the other time I've seen it, Ohm's law being used is dealing with tri troubleshooting um, equipment or uh, some maintenance folks doing some routine maintenance on, on equipment, checking to see if there's resistance in the circuit. And if there is resistance, then it means that like the circuit is complete or closed. And that's enough. All right. Switches, loads, meters, fuses, circuit breakers, all components. And, uh, and in this drawing, it's showing the electricity in uh, being going through something called series. And this is very rare to have anything wired in a series. And so the idea behind series is that... Uh, you, you're it's just going in one direction you'll see here in a second what what uh, parallel looks like but uh, in and out of the switch in and out of the resistor and uh, going to the load or the lighting in and out of the load and uh, if let's say for instance if this uh, light bulb because the electricity is traveling through the light bulb, let's say the light bulb broke in a series because there's a broken interruption right here, then the rest of anything past that, uh, actually I think the whole whole circuit would be down because you wouldn't have, wouldn't be connected at all. So this is never, Oh, man, I can think of too many times that I think of like a series, something done in series. I know it has been, but I can't come up with it off the top of my head. So know that there is something called wiring it in series, but that's not going to happen most of the time. And now we have uh, the idea of, look at, look at this, so you've got current flowing in and out of the switch got some other resistor maybe turning how much like you ever have those things on the wall that adjust the light level we have one of those here and then we have the the light bulb where they're calling it a load the lamp whatever and then another light bulb right and so what i'm saying is that the the in this undesirable way of wiring something up the current decreases if the circuit resistance increases and the current increases if the circuit resistance decreases. Anyway, the don't worry too much about this. I'm not trying to spend a lot of time on it. I'm just trying to show that there's a way to wire this that's sort of like an older, I don't know if it's old, but I assume it's old because it's never used anymore. Never is an all, uh, absolute, so I shouldn't use that. It's very rare to see anything done in, in uh in series like this. Most of the time it looks like this. It's wired like this, parallel. So have power coming this way and it doesn't matter whether this light bulb burns out because electricity can still get to the next one and get back, right? And so 
uh, from a schematic standpoint, here's the, the transformer. We have power coming through that light or the bulb, the lamp. And we have, so that it's, uh, you could, you could consider, mm, anyway, this is how things are usually wired, uh, parallel. All right, but if we look at like switches in parallel, so you can, uh, if, uh, in, and it has this note, any, any one or more switches must be closed to turn on the load to, in this case, we're having the motor being turned. In order for the motor to turn, one of these switches needs to be closed. If all the switches were open in this diagram, we have, uh, all of them are all of them are open. You couldn't get electricity through, but if you had one of them, you could get electricity through. And we'll cover like three-way switches here in a second and make more sense. But uh, let's keep going through. But the point being, these are all in parallel. All right, check this out. So you have this 120 volt supply and the there's no voltage drop or anything on the circuit due to it's not if it was in in series it's you the last thing in line would be theoretically getting less electricity but in this way uh you have the every little uh anything that's taking up a load or electric electrical load is is directly connected whoops to uh, the line side. Okay, I just wanted to, I don't really care if you know, maybe you watch that and fast forward and hey, way to go. But uh, know that uh, wiring things in parallel is normally how this is done. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, so far we really just, I've been really just wanted you to hear language that we use, like a circuit, um, voltage, amp, current, resistance, uh, line, load. We have uh, some things from the last parallel series probably never going to hear the word series but it's possible you could so i just wanted to bring it up there's another way to wire it and that's called series so you might hear it some point in time if uh depending on what you're getting into and then we talked about ac and dc and a little bit of hertz some language there go to wikipedia look all that stuff up see if you can figure out what it, what most of that things are talking about uh it'll help I'm going to jump more into uh, some more practical stuff now rather than language. And I'm not interested in trying to define all those things for you. And like, hey, you got to memorize what uh, the relationship between voltage, ampered, and current is. Anyway, I'm not worried about that stuff. Never used it in construction for me. I know the electrician knows that stuff, but and the designers do. Me, from a general contractor standpoint, don't know. Not I'm not uh, paying attention to those things. All right, pictorial, pictorial drawings show the physical details of electric components as seen by the eye. Not supposed to read my own PowerPoint, but uh, now we're getting out of schematic, and this is sort of what it would look like. In a, so the power is coming from this way, and we've got the 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 black wire is the current carrying conductor here in this case. So this is the one that we need. Black wire comes in here through the switch and then comes back to the light through this blue one and the blue one gets wired to the switch so the switch on your wall one of the things i want you to understand was the switch is only interrupting what i'm going to say the current carrying conductor the some say the the hot it's only interrupting the hot wire 
uh, meaning the neutral and the ground are not necessarily being interrupted. They're being interrupted because the hot wire is, and I shouldn't say current carrying conductor because I think neutral is con considered a current carrying conductor, uh, but uh, I'm talking about the hot wire. So the uh, this guy, if you uh, if you disconnected all this, say you disconnected this black wire and the gray wire and the white wire, um, and I'm not, and it looks like the uh, the gray wire is the ground because it's going to this little uh, ground lug, and this is the neutral wire. If I disconnected all this stuff, right, and I went and held my hand to this neutral wire, I would not get shocked. If I held my hand to the ground wire, I would not get shocked. Meaning it's all separated. Meaning, say we had three three wires sticking out and nothing there. I could touch the neutral on the ground all day long. As soon as I touch that, I'd get shocked. Uh, assuming that my body was allowing electricity to flow through it somewhere. Uh, but so if I touched the neutral wire and the ground wire separately, and I'm, or or at the same time. I would not get shocked and it wouldn't be until I was touching one of these two wires hey buddy will you shut the door buddy hey log Aiden so this one right here this this is the hot wire we're gonna call it that okay and the uh, the circ so the uh, the circuit for the light is being interrupted meaning it's open, opening the circuit uh, to the light bulb by interrupting that hot wire, okay? And check out the, uh, if you thought for a second, the black wire has, oops, sorry, I got text. Uh, the black wire has power, right? All the way to here. And let's say the switch was off. If the switch was off, there is no power getting through the switch because it's open, it's not connected. These two wires, the blue and the black, if the switch is in the off position, the switch is, is not, it's open, it's not touching. The, the, as soon as you flip the switch on, then the these two wires are now considered connected and it's bringing power to the light. So we're, we're physically interrupting the, the connectivity between these two wires in the switch, if that was... Uh, not completely obvious. Not sure if it was or not. And just talk a little bit more about what we're looking at here. So you have the neutral wire, you have the ground wire, and the ground wire is connected to this box because this is showing like a uh, uh, metallic conduit. And so this box is also a metallic conduit, so it's it's got the ground wire coming to it as well. And uh, you can see it being uh, landing right there. All right. So in this case, now we're showing more like, um, we have the panel here. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's our service panel, and uh, we have a bunch of conductors and wiring going through here, and we have a load, and then we have a control device, and inside here, we're going to use the term, let me see if I can uh, make this bigger. We have overcurrent protection provided by circuit breaker. <laughs> It's a uh, overcurrent protection. Very rarely hear it be called that. It's like you always call it a circuit breaker, but that's what it's the overcurrent protection is what it's actually doing. Um, we have some more words that you need to know. We have ground, and in this case, the conduit is EMT. Um, metallic tubing, I think, is the MNT. Uh, electrical metallic tubing. I don't know. I could be wrong. I have to go look that up on Google and see what. Let's do it. What does EMT conduit stand for? Electrical metallic tubing. Yes. 
according to Google. Uh, so we have like some metallic conduit here and uh, we have the main disconnect we got power wires from meter okay and then we've got uh, it's not showing everything here we've got the ground and uh, some lug right here that we're gonna I don't know if lugs the right word either it's a little terminal to tie into the ground wire and stuff so we'll get into more of that stuff here I'm just trying to give you language really but uh, oh, there we go. Go back. And they're using the term single pull switch used to control the light. And they're saying red wire, but anyway, it could be any color. Usually black, could be red. All right, but uh, the idea that here we're we have the a conversion right going on where we have an electrical service here and then it's converting electricity into light and so the load is doing something like heat um, the electricity is providing heat the electricity is providing light the elect or in this case with this light bulb both with a motor um, it could be doing both um, so, so the load idea is that now we're, we're converting that to, to something that we want. And the electricity is just allowing us to do something with it. And we got here, so some, uh, spend a little time on like controllers for a second. So there's a switch where it's automatic. I mean, a switch where it's manual, excuse me. And in this example, we have the same thing. We have a switch, but it's a float switch. And so it's going to turn on and off based off of like this float being turned on and off. Or we have what looks like some sort of a washing machine here. And maybe it's a dryer too. But uh, we have some the power being controlled automatically with inside of this uh, this device right oh uh, excuse me a long week all right we've talked about these in previous lectures but we've got photo cell or motion sensor that could also be turning on and off something right so the the controller doesn't always have to be manual it could be automatic or semi somewhat automatic uh, auto, mat, auto manual, I don't know if that's the right word. But uh, the point being, lots of different ways to do, to control whether power has is going to somewhere. And we'll get into drawings here in a second, but we've done this before. And the what are we seeing in drawings like this? We're seeing the layout of the, the component. The layout of the component is here, but not as, not as and it's showing relationship between the component and um, the switching devices in this case, um, but it's but it's not showing, and it's showing relationship between the different uh, components, what what it's tied together with. But it's not going to do is represent where the wire physically is because this is inaccurate. I'll show you here in a second. But so the electrical drawings. In some cases, it really does show you where the wire is supposed to go, but in most cases like this, it's not. And on uh, on, on this, it's showing uh, just an outlet, outlet, and it's not even showing that they're relating. There, there's a relationship between them. It's not, but it is showing that there's a relationship between this switch and this light. Switch and the light. Switch. Oh, one. Switch. Okay, so we've got. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, we've got a three-way switch here. It's not one. Switch three-way. So they, these lights right here are all relationship, it looks like, to me. Maybe this one is on a separate switch. I can't. It looks like it to me, but I would think that... Uh, I don't know. I don't know why they have two 
uh, three-way switch is shown here. So I would think that, that this is one and that is one. But the point being the wiring is not where the wire is going to physically go, but the device is physically there. And then notice that the switch on this is actually controlling the outlets as well, as well as this, this light. So it's possible to control uh, switch outlets with the switch, right? And we've got some things called uh, GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. And uh, anyway, I think, I think we're okay to move on, but I wanna make sure that you're following the, the electrical drawings. We've talked about HVAC having a lot of schematic. Electrical has a lot of schematic as well. Plumbing has a lot of schematic, but plumbing lines are generally pretty close to where it's drawn uh, on a commercial building anyways. But electrical, little they're just showing relationship. And the device locate or the, the component location is really what matters on these drawings. And even in my opinion, the electrical the architect's floor plan would probably govern over this as far as exactly where this outlet's gonna go or exactly where the lights go and the architect's reflected ceiling plan or the architect's uh, layout of different like kitchen components or kitchen uh, cabinets and stuff would probably dictate over exactly what this is going to do or they should be well coordinated oh yeah sorry get a long week cool and you guys know this already you folks know this stuff that we need to be using the symbols we'll get into that a little bit here when i look at the drawings but lots of symbols in electrical right and so uh, because i'm not uh i mean i even think probably the i bet i was in a meeting the other day with an electrician and uh we were talking about an estimate and i couldn't figure out what the drawings were talking about and i was quizzing the electric electrician about what what the intent of the, what he thought the, uh, how he interpreted the design. And he says, I couldn't do it either. I had to call the engineer and ask him what he intended. So <clears throat> even though there is a lot of symbols, it is pretty common that the symbols that are using something in, um, in their drawings that not quite following exactly what that is. Meaning the symbol doesn't really show it. I don't, maybe, if I remember, I'll show you. One of the cool things that I think is worthwhile is when uh, during the design or during some, somebody makes a list of what components they really want in, in a specific space or area. And so, um, and it doesn't have to look like this, but the planning out of but of like what equipment or what what do we want electricity for it is very good to do uh, prior to having a design and sometimes on like a, a residential project with not very uh, good drawings i don't want to say they're very good because not very detailed drawings because we're not trying to pay for the design we're trying to just coordinate it on site doing something like this where you have like a nice list of this bedroom should have all these things. Uh, you kind of see TV outlet, intercom, uh, speakers, uh, ice maker, blender, small refrigerator, hot plate. So they're in the family room. We're planning a bunch of stuff. So we need to make sure that we have that as well as all these and then the lighting and then the major appliances. Anyway, one way to do it but uh, definitely a good thing. So this next slide, the wiring plan is usually, it's kind of like showing this wiring plan and outlets. I think this is, I think this slide is really disingenuous and that uh, you would never really see outlets with wiring plans on. Oh, I just lied because I was going to show you where that was. Let me see if I have it open no i'll do it in a minute okay so i have seen outlets where they specifically show the wire <laughs> where it is being located and uh 
upon the drawings, but usually they're not. And so, but it is important to know what this arrow means. And it's usually indicating that it's going back to the panel box that this is, this is going back to all these, uh, all these outlets are connected. This switch and this light are connected and it's all on one circuit going back to the panel. All right, let's look at some real uh, better three-dimensional drawings here. So this is a typical bedroom. And let's look at that right there. <clears throat> Even though they're showing this in like um, EMT, so electrical, so it could be most... I think the term is Romex and residential, and I always have to check myself because I'm not positive. No, um, So non-metallic um, is what I'm referring to. <clears throat> hate it when I can't remember during a lecture uh, the, the exact term and I'll go look it up later and then I'm still recording myself. But I think that's fine. Like I'm not an electrician. I'm not a journeyman. And uh, I still struggle with some of the language sometimes, just like I was talking about in the last lecture when I'm talking about controls, I can get through the meetings and I can hear it and I can understand it, but I'm, a, I'm foreign to that. And so just like a foreign speaker to English language is going to pick up uh, a lot as they've been around folks speaking a lot of English, they're better at their, their native tongue, right? So I'm better at the things that I, that, uh, uh, I know a lot about and I've done electricity. I know a lot about electrical trade, HVAC, mechanical, electric plumbing. I feel really competent, but I don't claim to be a journeyman, anything. And so I still struggle with some of the language sometimes. And I can't remember Romex off the top of my head for some reason right now, but that's what I'm thinking this could be. Uh, probably dumb. You guys are like, oh man, it's Romex or it's something else. But right now I can't remember. So, but what are we looking at? So we've got, uh, see if we can find it. Just kind of like this isometric drawing where we've got, we got our, uh, we've got our outlets here, right? So, and whoever ran this wiring, let's just kind of trace it back. Looks like it starts right here to me. And they're saying like, okay, hey, the power's right here. And we're gonna start connecting all these outlets, convenience outlets. And then we're gonna run the power up to the light. And then uh, we're gonna come with the, the circuit wiring. We're gonna get that light. Then we're gonna come back down to this switch right here. And the switch is right here and so the switch is going to interrupt the hot wire and uh, normally if they just bring the if they're if they're having to splice right here uh, the neutral wire is just spliced inside the box together by itself <clears throat> but hopefully you saw how hey okay all this is one circuit in a bedroom and uh, you can see like the power or the this is pretty pretty good example of how they might run the run the uh, run that uh, the wire through the walls. I like this this little drawing showing how they might do that, and I like how it's like coming up over, and then this way it could also go through the joists and into here if that was the the case. I doubt it would run on on the top of this. Uh, this is the only part that I thought was maybe not the most accurate. It would have to be up maybe that's what this is supposed to show is like up more into the ceiling space uh, the floor floor joist space above rather than actually traveling right along the top of this double top header of this framing that's that's inaccurate but if it went up like another couple inches it would be okay from a 
and like this one right here I hope that that's showing here got another switch and uh, I don't know where that one's going maybe that one's going to here and this one's going to here I just told you wrong so it looks like power's coming here picking up that coming over here I don't know why they did that but the point being the power went through the switches first and then it went to the light and that's fine and here's the uh, isometric drawing oh yeah okay switch here was connected to there switch there is connected to here and it was hard to tell from the blue exactly how that was going to happen here but uh, that's okay trying to do the, the best we can with these graphics that uh, are given to me it's good good to have these graphics well all right now let's look at the wiring of uh, some some additional stuff inside of the bathroom okay all right looks like to me we've got power coming in here notice this is GFCI and I can't looks like it's splitting going two directions two directions and so uh, coming over to uh, this fan and light switch so the point being it can it can go off in multiple directions all right that's fine that's not a problem because we're doing this in in uh, parallel you can do lots of stuff like this works just fine and so this uh, this light up here, this junction box, <clears throat> is connected to this light. Uh, the fan <clears throat> is on one switch, and the light is on another switch. So you could turn. This is a bathroom, right? So we got the fan and the light. And then, uh, are we doing three-way switches? <laughs> nope. We've got these um these are little uh, pendant looking um, bulb uh fixtures light fixtures on the wall right here and here and we've got the light switch right there feeding that but i think that's pretty good representation of how it might work out with how they would actually run the wire <coughs> all right so it's getting a little dry hold on Oh, we should go back and look at their uh, floor plan on that real quick. Yeah. Switch one and two, one for the light, one for the fan. Switch for uh, this light light. You got the GFCI and the GFCI. Not sure where the... Oh, interesting. So this guy right here has one switch and one, one outlet in it. Okay. Cool. Now here's the uh, a fun one. So we're dealing with a three-way switch in a hallway and a light right here. So you got the power coming in here, coming up to the light, and then it's going two directions and it's connecting this stuff. So let's just kind of pay attention to what's going on a three-way switch. And uh, I like this stuff. I think this is fun. Just understanding how a three-way switch is going. So we're saying black and we're going to call out the hot wire and they're going to use red and black both as potential hot wires meaning uh, but depends on <clears throat> this is a, a three-way switch and so what the switch is doing is basically making it so that <clears throat> it is either connecting this this one right here with either this side or this side Okay, think of that. So let's say, for instance, this switch is connected and, and, it, and it's in a position where it's connecting this black wire to that black wire. And then it goes through this switch right here. And what, what position is this switch in? Is the switch connecting this wire to this red or is it connecting it to the black? 
And if it's connected to the red, what's the what's the electricity doing? Electricity is going through here, connected here, and it's stopping because this is not connecting these two. <clears throat> I think this would still be black, by the way, not white. This is incorrect. This uh, still st they're not going to connect that to the white wire. The uh, not yet, anyways. Not until after it. I mean, I think that this is correct on this side over here, but it's not connected. This is still black. The Now, we have, what if this switch was connected and it was in a position, like switches position, it's connecting this black wire with this red wire. Red wire's got power, and then it comes over here, and this switch is still connecting these two. For sure, it would go turn on the light. And so what this what this is doing is it's just switching between what what uh what conductor is uh if it's going to if it's switching which conductor is active it's also both of them have to be on the same conductor for the circuit to go through meaning this this light switch has to be on the red this one has to be on the red and you don't know by just looking on the outside of the switch the three-way switch but that's what would have to be the situation in order for the power to go through. And as soon as you turn one of these switches, it would switch it back to the black. And so the, the basically the power would be coming over to here and it would stop. Because this one, this switch, is on that circuit thinking. And so the power comes over here. It doesn't actually get through this red. But this one is connected to the red. Anyway, I hope that made sense. I think that the three-way switch is pretty cool, worthwhile knowing a little bit about there in your home. If you ever have to troubleshoot, probably look at a better YouTube video than what I just said, but understand that's what's going on. All right, we've got uh, a <clears throat> living room layout with uh, some split-wired receptacles. Whoops. In this case, the switch is controlling this as well as that. You follow that? You've seen those in the home where they have like lamps or something, little uh, table lamps on maybe like uh, end table or something like that plugged into the wall. And so you can have the switch on that. So you've got the switch and it's controlling this. There would have to be a lot more. Yeah, they're showing it. It's too hard to show in this exactly. I don't think it's worthwhile. Uh, but notice how much more, um, how many more conductors needed in this raceway, theoretical raceway to do this. It is a lot more. So this this is going to have to be all connected, and then this is going to be. Uh, anyway, I don't think it's worthwhile to show more on this. I think I'm good. Okay, we got the garage. On this one, we've got just a bunch of different scenarios I'm trying to show. We got a three-way switch, a single switch here, and GFCI. And that looks pretty good on how, I, I like this one here, because this is, look how they actually threw the blue wire through the joists. That's more right, that's, that's more accurate how they might run that. And knowing all the lighting and the terminations, we could go through it, but that's fine. We're good. Now, if we did some uh, think through, just want to run through this real quick. So any wall, we're in, we're in a kitchen, and just think of like all the stuff in a the kitchen. There's a lot, usually. And so we have a disposal here. we got a... Just think through all the stuff. We've got a refrigerator, oven, microwave. Um, I don't know. Maybe we got some lighting up here. We've got some fans. Um, I don't know what we have. But we have lots of stuff. And just kind of think through all the rough-in stuff that you would need. And so we've got our panel here. And we need a different voltage for the oven. The oven is going to be 230 volts, not 120. And so... <clears throat> or 115 and so that's showing how they might rough in 
the uh, for that outlet for that that particular oven right very good so how are we going to rough in for the power outlets coming from the panel everything's gfci'd uh, and so that would be one scenario how they would go in and out of the box in and out of the box and through the studs in and out of the box through the studs okay and in this case we've got some lighting and we've got the switch coming to i've got power from the panel to the switch and we've got uh What is this guy? Another switch? All right. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. We got two switches, and uh, one of them. So one of them's to uh, a light, and the other one's to a fan. All right. Well, whatever. You just you, same thing. You're just interrupting the power with a switch, whether it's a fan or not. I just wanted to show rough in because I like these little graphics for rough in. That might be how they actually do the uh, dishwasher, garbage disposal. Uh, in this case, <clears throat> showing them on different circuits, right? They're all they're all home run from the panel, and uh, that's because they're each each of those takes a lot of amps. So uh, that's that's what the plan is here to have them all home home run. Now, electrician have to work that out. And look at the equipment that we have the power to decide that stuff, but that's a good strategy right there and pretty accurate. Wire nuts. So kind of going back a, a slide or two, notice all the wire nuts. Hopefully it's obvious, but uh, the wire nuts are different sizes and they're all different colors. And so you can have um, different wire nuts can handle so many different uh, splices and stuff and of the different size wire so just know wire nuts not one size fits all and you're supposed to do this uh, not, not you because we're not we're not electricians but the electrician is supposed to know when to use different wire nuts right and we've got different uh, gauges <clears throat> Uh, for branch circuits, so we've got uh, 240 volts and number 8 wire. Number 10 wire could be run 120 volt or 240. And, and you're going to see this a lot. People are going to say like 230, 220, 110, 115, 120. Uh, I don't really know why that we have like all that language there, whether it's 110, 120, 115, or is it 220 to 230 or 240 um they're just talking about it's all the same really i don't know like why it's so different why it would be considered 220 versus 240 but um to me it's it, they're synonymous with each other i don't know the the minutia details as to why you would call it 110 115 or 120 i really don't but i know that they're basically synonymous with each other and then we got so but the, but i do know and i do understand that the different wire size is uh and this is might be too simple because wire length it matters as well but uh the wire size 12 gauge uh you can still use for a certain number of watts but notice that like if we're on 240 you can do 7600 watts if we're doing a number 10 wire we can get 5700 watts for 240 volt and then a 12 wire, we can still use it, but you're cranking the wattage way down. And then for a 14 gauge wire, uh, we're not even doing that. And so it could be a 20, 20, uh, 20 amp circuit. On this one, they're saying 25 amp circuit, 30 amp circuit, right? The uh, and then for uh, the the additional wire sizes. Uh, look at what they're calling it out for thermostats uh, and cords I don't know what cords means but basically <clears throat> control wire or uh, you could be into wire sizes for like communications and um, 
data, right? So data wiring, all, all smaller. But when we're talking branch circuits and power um, inside a residence, those are the, the main sizes there. All right, well, I think it's obvious that when they splice these uh, wires together, they use a wire nut. They're supposed to twist, the uh, electrician twists the wire up together and slips that wire nut over the top. If you're going to tape it, if the electrician's going to tape it, they can do this. I haven't seen anybody tape wires ever. So probably pretty common somewhere in some part of the country, but <coughs> for me, no, never seen it. And then uh, had this slide for different types of splicing. Never seen it done. Ah, I shouldn't say that. I've seen it done a couple times. Um, it's called the Western Union splice. I've also seen this done a couple times. Super uncommon to do this though. Um, but seen it done once. And I'm not an electrician, maybe it happens all the time, but I doubt it. <clears throat> soldering or sold, soldering, I don't know how to pronounce that. Soldering, soldering, uh, wiring together is a possibility. I've seen this a fair amount in different controls and <clears throat> fire alarms, stuff like that, where they're trying to combine wires. Um, seen the, uh, I should say fire suppression, not fire alarm. All kinds of different things in there. We could have a, a, a split bolt connector where like the, it's a, anyway, you run this nut up and it compresses the, uh, compresses all that together and then that's considered spliced. And then we've got different ways that the, Again, a word terminal is worthwhile to know. Terminal. Um, and also termination is a good term. So bending the wire around the terminal shown here. We're on basic electricity. So maybe this is like, dude, hey, you already know. I know this stuff already. Well, I hope so. I mean, this is basic electrical stuff. We'll get into more. Um, but I want, I want to make sure that we're communicating this stuff, right? So you also have the ability on on some devices where you can actually just like push the wire in a solid wire in and it will uh, you'd have to like insert this little thing over here to get it to release but it kind of catches and it's a little faster quick connector <laughs> he showed this and I've seen this a few times where they actually like uh, tape the nut as well but I don't know why and then I think it's worthwhile to know that there are some connectors that are used sometimes um, this little graphic is showing like the possibility of like these little tiny connectors and I see that on uh, like industrial controls a lot but uh, <clears throat> larger connectors like same kind of theory uh, terminals it could be on uh, a lot of the larger higher voltage as well like different crimp connectors that go on all right all right now let's look at some drawings <clears throat> and we want to talk about not ex maybe i'll spend a little bit of time on this one line diagram but first, let's let's look at what we have in the drawings, and so let's just kind of go to the first electrical page. So we have. I wonder if there's a. Okay. So here is a smaller red, uh, commercial project, and I've been showing these sets of drawings for a bit and but it's got some uh, significant electrical in it but you can see we've got uh, i don't know seven different drawings site plan one line diagram lighting power roof power 
electrical schedules. So remember we went through drawings a while ago and typically you don't see a lot of cut sections like you do on on residential um, and sometimes you, one of the things you get a lot in MEP is you get a lot of like standard details in in uh, the electrical plumbing and I'm going to show you some of the let's go to the, a couple of these drawings real quick electrical general information okay hey general information that's good we get the legend that's what we need uh, on the on this set of drawings <clears throat> What are you recognizing here? What's all this stuff about? I hope you're following. Typical device mounting heights. Why? Well, part of it is ADA, and some of it is not ADA. Let's see if they have anything there. I don't see. Oh, here we go. Accessible. Oh, no, that's not accessible. Accessible ceilings different than ADA. Anyway, the uh, that's not showing the ADA stuff that I can see. So I probably want to go back to the other draw, the architect's drawing to see if he's got some ADA stuff. <clears throat> this is just typical mounting heights. Okay, got it. Telephone and voice diagram. Pole base detail. Why is there a pole base detail on the general drawings? No idea, but it looks like it's an RFI, so they took some space on their drawings and put it on there. Uh, here's their little project narrative, All right? And I like how they do this. Like you can do that. Uh, this is the designers, and they give you their phone number so you can call them, ask them questions. Um, a lot of luck, and we got some basic little notes. Okay, I'm going to get past, uh, let's go to the next sheet. What are we going to see? Oh, hey, here's the site plan. Uh, some gate operator stuff. I forget what this is, S1 and S2. Sump, drain pipe, S4, S7, S5, S4, water tank, heat trace. Anyway, you got a site plan with some electricity. Okay. Good there. Oh, what's this? Bunch of panel schedules. <clears throat> so we've looked at HVAC, we've looked at plumbing, and you should be expecting to see schedules. Now the electrical schedules, I don't know. For me, at one point in time, I thought they were hard to read. They're not too bad, usually. Uh, sometimes they can be a challenge to figure out uh, what they mean sometimes but what I like what I was going to show you here was this electrical one line diagram so I'm going to go through that a little bit and then we'll do schedules a little bit later but before we get into the one line diagram let's continue on to see how many what are the drawings we have all right we've got what looks to be a lighting uh, drawing look at all the changes like this a lot of changes to this set different RFIs um, bunch of notes on the drawings appreciate how people keep their drawings up to date always nice <clears throat> so we got a lighting uh, a lighting uh, plan then we've got a power plan we should get rid of all this orange real quick no it's locked why is it locked though no oh, I should be able to change it anyways not gonna do that right now sorry and we've got uh, <clears throat> the orange was done with uh, the program to note what was different. So this is like a comparison. So all these notes changed, all this changed. And so for some reason he, <clears throat> he or she put this drawing in there. But the point being, we have a power plan. And look, I was talking about... <clears throat> this right here you see how they're showing this this is not actually the location of the conduit it's still showing representation of what's related and so this could be in the ceiling but and this could be done like this I mean theoretically it could but 
also the this is still showing relationships but maybe the one time this might work out like this they're saying conduit in slab and someone's like detailing out where it is like conduit in slab and I was saying it's very rare for someone to show where the conduit is going that might be a uh, something that they actually because they're labeling it it could still be for um, it, it would be worthwhile putting the conduit like this in my opinion if that's what they labeled conduit and slab right here then yes put the conduit and slab in going from this outlet over to there and to there <clears throat> but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that uh, could still be schematic in nature, but at least I found you an example of where they actually labeled where the condo is going to go. And what do we have in here? Hey, we did VAVs last time. Look, we've got a disconnect for the VAV, VAV 15 right here. And the motorized uh, damper is, I believe, what the M is. I have to, let's go look. Yeah, motor, disconnect, combination motor, starter, disconnects, which is what that's supposed to be. I forget if it had an X through it. No, just a dash. What's the dash? Fuse disconnect switch. So it was a fuse dis disconnect switch. And... Uh, So this is a fuse disconnect switch to the motor on that VAV, right? Very good. And what does that little arrow mean? It's going back to the panel. And what panel doesn't say, but we could go back to the panel schedule and see what they're doing, where all these VAVs are landing. Should we do that? Yes, we should. Just as an example of how to read a set of drawings. Whoop. Panel schedules, electrical schedules, equipment schedule. Here's all the VAVs. And panel designation. <clears throat> so I have the schedule here. Equipment schedule is easier to get to than to read the panel. But uh, you can see all the VAVs lining up here. And I thought we were on like 17 or something like that. So VAV, oh, terminal heating, look at that. That's why it's 480 volts. I forgot that that had a terminal in it. It's a VAV plus a terminal. Uh, be interesting to see because I don't think that the... Uh, I wonder if they step that down and use a uh, low voltage to do the motor, the, the damper motor. Huh. Anyways, definitely not going to be 480 to the damper motor. But the terminal heating is what it's got. The VAV 17, 480 volts. It's panel H1. It's using circuits 3, 15, and 17. So where's panel H1? No. All right, panel H1, where are you? H1. <clears throat> Here's also H1. Here's a bunch of VAVs. Oh, here we are, here's 17. A lot of times they have like 
the list down here on the, on the pen. Oh, here it is, circuit right there. Uh, so it's circuit 15, and uh, I forget, but he listed a bunch of them actually on that. And was it two? Was it 15, 17, and I forget. I was probably using multiple circuits here. Panel circuit. Okay, let's end the lecture on this guy right here. Electrical one line diagram. Oh, wait, did I get through all the electrical drawings? We got a roof power plan. What do we have on here? Mostly looks like lightning protection. We'll go through that a little bit later. Uh, usually it's like some bare copper wire sitting around, but we'll see what it is. Uh, ice cable, ice snow melt. And then we had the equipment schedule, the lighting schedule, and some more panel schedules, DP panel and the P P2 panel. Um, it looks DP, uh, probably data. Um, anyway, cool. Let's go back to, and we'll end on a one line diagram. This is a pretty complicated one line diagram relative to like a home, but for this little commercial project, not too hard, okay? So we have utility transformer. This is where the powers come in from the utility, meaning if it was like Utah, Rocky Mountain Power. Yeah, I don't know who's doing the power on this job. Utility transformer and primary installed by others. So it's saying by others, meaning the um, this this transformer is either currently available or it was uh, it's the it's the responsibility of uh, the client with uh, the utility provider to provide this okay and they're saying they have uh, this this right here is four wires and it's a 500 kc mil three inch conduit so let's just kind of look at what this is this is representing four of i went and looked it up online because i four of these cables that have this kind of stuff in it okay that works and there's three inch conduit and I looked up the size of this. So I'm, I'm assuming there's one of those cables uh, per three inch conduit is my guess. Then that, that service comes into this uh, NEMA rated panel. So like, a, it's not a panel, I should say, uh, what's the right word? Enclosure. So there's an enclosure right here, probably on the side of the building or something or somewhere in the electrical room or somewhere. And then it's changing. I didn't look that up. But uh, then it's going to this thing right here, and it's a switch, and it's called the ATS, Automatic Transfer Switch. Well, over here is all the panels for the building. This is still like the service. So what do we have? Why would we need a switch? Because they have a temporary generator available. They have a generator that if they lose power, it can automatically switch over to this generator and the generator can provide power to the building, okay? But normally, this is sitting there on the, the utility, the power utility, and I don't know what's, but they have a bunch of notes, so maybe I should go back. I mean, you have this grounding stuff over here and uh, grounding or bonding to the metallic water pipe. I'm not sure which one it would be called. You got the ground loop around the, around the building, all this is schematic in nature, um, but you have this cool thing called the automatic transfer switch. Um, and you have the remote enunciator in the control room. So some it's saying the ATS is monitored by the enunciator, which is part of the fire alarm, I believe. Or maybe this is like part, not part of the fire alarm. I'd have to read more information to see what that is. <clears throat> okay, now we have what? H1. Well, H1 is finally a panel. And panel H1, if we went and found it again, notice the voltage 
that they have is uh, has not been stepped down yet. 48277. So this is a, this is H1, and that's H because it's the higher voltage panel. Almost always is like the idea behind H. So they have this H1 that is uh, 480 or 277 volts, and then its primary feed is going to this transformer number four, and a secondary over to a three-section panel called P1. So let's look at P1. Oh, okay, three sections of this panel, P1, 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 and that, that little thing right there on the one-line diagram is representing this panel with three sections in it with all these things on it. So why did it have a transformer? Because I don't know if we really talked about transformer, but the voltage at this panel is uh, 480 or 277, but it needs to step down to 12208. <clears throat> and so that transformer is going to convert the voltage to a different voltage so that you can, can run things like the heat trace or the sump pump or um, the coffee or the water cooler you see like what what it's trying to provide power to the printer or the com room all right cool that's what p1 is about p now the h1 this panel here that's 477 to 270 or 480 277 it's also primarily feeding this transformer number two got a secondary go to p2 what is P2? Uh, well, here's our H1. I already looked at H1. I don't know where P panel P2 is. No, oh, right here. So P2 is 12208 and uh, and that is the, uh, what is that? That is, I don't know what a CUH-1 is. Condensing unit, underfloor condensing unit. I know that UFCU is underfloor condensing unit. So anyways, we got this other panel that we're, it's feeding. Okay, and then it's going uninterrupted power supply, X1, what is X1? Provide a 60 amp three pole circuit breaker in uninterrupted power supply output, circuit breaker of type and manufacturer per AIC, I don't know. I don't know much about this specifics, uninterrupted power supply, I know what it is, but DP, that's their data panel. And so uh, they're looking for uninterrupted power supply so that they don't ever lose um, lose power on that. So when this, if this uh, utility gets interrupted, this thing's going to keep going, I think, in order to make sure that this panel stays active for a while. And the UPS system, um, uninterrupted power supply. Okay, we're through to a basic one line. And I was just trying to like, show you utilities over here we've got a cool generator got an ats uh, we've got panel number two panel number one then we've got this data panel over here that has a ups on it, uninterrupted power supply anyway and the h1 h1 is a higher voltage panel so hopefully this this no one really uh, like never really grasped one lines until uh, maybe a few years into my career as a manager, but it would have really helped me to be able to have some basic idea of how to navigate through a one line diagram. Because there's a lot of coordination that has to happen. And this is really important in that when we're going to talk about coordination next time, I can't be asking for power to the DP unless I have power to H1 and unless I have the ATS ready to go, and I should say I, because it's not me, the electrician, maybe I'm the coordinator, I'm saying, well, no, we need to get something running 
and we need to get all our uh, all our uh, I don't know sump pump sump pump super important it's in P1 uh, panel P1 I need that on I need that sump pump to have power well what do I need I need a transformer we need to have a transformer on we need the high voltage panel made up uh, we need the ATS working. We need to have all this going back to here in order for that. Just that one thing that I need is so important to that sump pump. Anyway, I think that that's a really good concept to, to leave you on there. That how you would use this information and this far down the line stuff when we're talking, no, oh, I need this heat trace. Where's that? How much stuff needs to be ready to go and not, not, uh, Definitely do not ignore the uh, the power supply coming in. And I have a good sh share, uh, story in the next one to talk about that. But um, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll end it there and we'll pick it up on the next lecture. Thanks so much. Appreciate you joining with me.